G'day legends, g'day superstars, it's Peps, and I'm here to bring you the round eight losers for a massive round of AFL football. Now let's be honest, anybody can pick a winner. Just ask any kindergarten kid. So we make sure that every single week here at Lace Out, we're telling you who is going to lose and majorly why they are going to go down. And it's all kicking off tonight. 7.30 p.m. at the Adelaide Oval. Adelaide versus Port Adelaide. It is the showdown. We love it. They belt the living suitcases out of each other, and there is nothing better just to sit back with a nice cuppa or a beverage as we see the Crows and the Power just punch the snot out of each other. And that's why we love the great game of AFL football. When you look at both of these teams, uh, Adelaide have been down probably bigger than anybody so far this season outside of the Brisbane Lions. And Port Adelaide, yeah, they're sitting in the eight, but there are still questions being asked about them. Now, from an eye perspective, because we don't go by the facts, we go by what the eyes and the heart says. And if I go by who in the eyes and the heart, it's simply that Adelaide are just not going to be good enough. Now, I know Connor Rosie has got a bit of a twang in the string. Is that going to be a danger for the Port Power? I don't think so. And that's why I think Adelaide are going to go down. They're going to go down quite considerably, probably three or four goals. Um, and I reckon Zach Butters is going to absolutely tear them a new one. And Mitch Georgiades will be the leading goal kicker for the round. All right, let's kick into 7.40 p.m. The traditional. We got Carlton. We got Collingwood. That's at the MCG. 7.40 p.m. And do we like these two teams punching the crap out of each other as well too? It's that type of weekend where teams, rivalries, a bit of this, and that's what we love about the great game. It's going to be awesome. Dugowie is not going to be playing. Chera is back in. They've dropped four, Carlton, and that's why I'm thinking they're going to be solid. They're going to be strong, and I just think Collingwood are not at the powers that they need to be. Yeah, they had a great win last week, but I don't think that they're going to be at the caliber of Carlton. And I think the Carlton Blues are going to have an, have an absolute corker this week, and that means Collingwood with no Dugowie uh, means it's going to be a bit of a uh, disaster for them. They're going to go down by about five or six goals, I reckon, this week. And I think Carlton are going to be sitting premiership favourites outside of GWS after round eight of the AFL. All right. We've had the traditional. We've had the showdown. And now it's the Battle of the Bridge, Saturday, 1.45 p.m. Then it's two versus three on the AFL ladder. It's Sydney versus GWS. Two teams have been playing probably the best football outside of Carlton throughout the entire year so far. Here's the thing, though. I love what GWS do. They're fast, they're hard, they're aggressive. They've got everything about Kingsley about them, and I just love the way that they play their football. Even though this one is going to be at the Sydney uh, home ground Saturday, 1.45 p.m. at the SCG, I just think Sydney, this is a game that I think that they will just lose. They're just going to lose. I reckon it's going to be really tight, less than a goal for this one. Um, and I just think that GWS are going to say to their big brother, hey, enough is enough. We're taking over the town, and we're going to be the number one show in New South Wales. So it'll be less than a goal. Jesse Hogan to kick two, but Toby, don't mess with me, Green. He's going to kick four and take out the highest goal kicker on the day as well. All right. Probably could skip the next game. Saturday, 4.35 p.m. at Marvel Stadium. We're talking about the Saints. We're talking about North Melbourne. We're talking about who really cares about this one. Only those two teams. St Kilda, Max King is back. Webster's back. They are going to win. 50 points minimum, not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, so that means North Melbourne are going to lose their eighth game for the season and just put more pain on the blue and white. There has been talk this week that they should fold and for when Tasmania come in. I don't know, but geez, they're not looking too flashy. It could be for the first time in a long time that a team goes winless throughout the the season. We've told you, as long as you get it past their half forward line or their half back line, you are pretty much got free reign to goal. And St Kilda will do that really easy on the weekend. All right. We've had some cracking games so far. This is going to be an absolute belter as well, too. Melbourne versus Geelong. It is at 7 30 p.m. Saturday at the MSCG, the home of AFL football. And I'll tell you what, the D's are not making any changes this week. Geelong, they've brought in a couple of their absolute specials. As well, too. Clark comes in, Tui comes in, and uh, Gary Rowan getting back in to the team as well, too. I think the D's are going to lose this one, and I think it's going to be quite close. Two goals in it. I just think that the uh, the D's cracking back line, cracking midfield. Their forward line is still a uh, work in progress, and I think that's what's going to let them down. It's not that they're going to lose in the defensive side. They're just not going to kick a big enough score. That's usually what happens when teams lose. But from Melbourne's perspective, 
it'll be because they're just not able to get enough runs on the board and enough scoring shots. And I think Geelong, Jeremy Cameron, best player in the league so far in 2024, will have uh, a Monty. I could see someone maybe like a um, uh, a Petty going to him. I could even see um, the great man, uh, Tommy McDonald, probably one of the best runners in the league. He could also go to him. Jared Rivers, I'm oh, sorry, Jared Rivers. Trent Rivers could also be an option there as well too. All right, here's the upset of the weekend, and it's going to be happening. It's Saturday, 8, 10 p.m. over at Optus Stadium, West Coast Eagles versus Essendon. Essendon are going to lose. I'm telling you now, this is the upset of the weekend. West Coast Eagles will beat Essendon. They've been playing great footy. They love playing over there at the home ground at Optus Stadium. Harley Reid is going to be back. Ali Eo has been playing great footy, and they are primed. Essendon, Draper won't be playing. They've given him the chop. And I just think this is the game that Essendon will drop. They just, they're just they just not there yet. And this is one of those games where I'm a little bit uh, suspect that they're not going to be able to get the uh, bring the milkshakes to the yard. And so they're going to lose this one. And then they're going to lose this one by about three goals, I reckon. West Coast, I reckon, are a Monty. So put your house on it. Just don't blame me if you don't win. All right, Richmond and Fremantle heading over to Sunday, 1 p.m. Richmond, they're going to lose. Simple as that. Too many injuries. Um, Love them on last week um, with Hopper going down. The, the injury list is just building. Fremantle, they got some spunk back about them last week as well too. They'll come over. They'll just do what they need to do. Maybe make it three or four goals. It won't be a massive win because Fremantle don't keep big scores. But I reckon that they're a massive chance to uh, take this one out quite easily and Richmond just continue their miserable season. Uh, and for Adam Uze, the rebuild just keeps continuing. All right, Sunday 4 p.m. at Marvel Stadium, Western Bulldogs versus Hawthorne. Hawthorne will lose this one, but I reckon it's going to be a lot closer than we think Western Bulldogs. They're not going to have um, the little fella down there, uh, Cody Waitman, with his obviously sore arms. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge for them. And I just think that the way that they've been playing, they've been a bit of subjointed. They haven't been able to work their way together. It hasn't been fantastic. And I am just don't think that um, – I don't think that they're that good, but they will beat Hawthorne. So Western Bulldogs, two or three goals. Hawthorne, another disappointing week. They could potentially they could potentially win it, but I just don't think that they're going to. Western Bulldogs, they just got a lot more to show. And so Hawthorne, unfortunately, going to have another loss under Mitchell. And probably the game, we've had so many to start the week, and now we're going to have so many to finish the weekend. The Brisbane Lions versus the Gold Coast at the Jab of the Harp at 17 p.m. So sit down after a massive week watching great footy, doing the chores around the house, getting to the local footy, doing some painting, doing some chores, doing some pottery if you're into that sort of thing, and settle down for probably an absolute corker of a game. And the Brisbane Lions, even though it's at their home ground, they will lose to the Gold Coast Suns. We spoke about what GWS are going to do. We're now going to speak about what the uh, Gold Coast are going to do. They're going to put some pain on the Brisbane Lions. Brisbane, if they lose this weekend, which I think that they will, they will not be playing finals this season. Pressure will be on Fagan. Pressure will be on the playing group. They're just not good enough. And this is for, once again, the little fellas in Queensland, the Gold Coast Suns, to say, we're going to shine a hell of a lot brighter than you, Brisbane Lions. We're going to crunch her. And they're going to win this one by about two to three goals at the most. And don't be surprised if uh, Jack Lacocious, even though he's been coming off the halfback line, they do a bit of a switchy switchy, and he goes down to the forward line and kicks uh, two or three to set the win up for them as well too. But I love everything about Gold Coast. And if they win this week, they are, once again, a huge chance to play finals for the first time in the club's history. There you go. There are tipped outs. Round eight losers for a massive week of footy. Remember, join J-Dog and me every Monday night. Lace out on the YouTube and our Facebook page. Join us. Be part of the show because you know what? It's how you want your footy. And we love bringing it to you every single week. Hope your team loses. See you later.